When understanding the long territorial disputes of Sabah, between the federal government of Malaysia and the Philippines, presenting itself as the successor state of the Sultanate of Sulu. We must go back to its history, and its geographical location. Sabah is located on the northern portion of the island of Borneo, in Southeast Asia. In the present day, Sabah is one of the 13 states, together with its three federal territories that composed the Federation of Malaysia. Going back to the 15th century, the settlement currently known as Sabah had become part of the empire of the Sultanate of Brunei, during the reign of the fifth sultan, known as Bolkia. In 1658, the Sultan of Brunei ceded the northern and eastern portion of Borneo to the Sultanate of Sulu, in compensation for the latter's help in settling the Brunei Civil War in the Brunei Sultanate. In 1761, Alexander Dalrymple, an officer of the British East India Company, concluded an agreement with the Sultan of Sulu to allow him to set up a trading post in the region. It was been formalized in 1878, when William Cowie, on behalf of Dent's company, negotiated and obtained a concession in perpetuity from the Sultan of Sulu over its holdings in this region. This concession was signed on the 22nd of January 1878 in the palace of the Sultan of Sulu. The rights were subsequently transferred to Alfred Dent, who on 26 August 1881 formed the British North Borneo Provisional Association Limited. A few months after, the British government granted a royal charter, and the British North Borneo Chartered Company was subsequently formed on 1 November. In 1888, North Borneo became a protectorate of the United Kingdom. The control and administration over North Borneo, remained in the hands of the company despite being a protectorate, and they effectively ruled until 1942. During the Second World War, as part of the continuous expansion of the Empire of Japan, the North Borneo island including Saba was occupied by the Japanese from 1942 to 1945. In 1945 after the liberation from Japanese occupation, North Borneo was administered by the British military administration and became a British Crown Colony, until mid-1946. After the Philippines' independence from the United States on July 4, 1946, seven British-controlled islands on the northern coast of Borneo named Turtle Islands including Cagayan de Tawi-Tawi and Mangsi Islands were ceded to the Philippine government by the Crown Colony government of North Borneo. But Sabah still remained part of the British Crown Colony, until August 31, 1963 when North Borneo attained self-government from the British Empire. Between 1961 to mid-1963, during the transition of the liberation of Sabah and the formation of Malaysia, the Kabul Commission was set up to determine whether the people of Sabah and Sarawak favoured the proposed union. The commission had found that the union was generally favored by the residents but also noted some opposition from the people but decided that such opposition was minor. Despite the opposition, the commission made the recommendation without any referendum conducted, unlike the referendum conducted in Singapore. As reported by the commission, ethnic community leaders of Sabah would eventually support the formation. Despite of some opposition, an agreement was signed and William Good, the last governor of North Borneo, signed on behalf of the territory on 1 August 1962, putting to paper the agreement to form the union. Initially, the unification of Sabah to Malaysia was scheduled on August 31, 1963, but due to objections from the Philippines and Indonesia, the formation had to be postponed to 16 September 1963. At that time, North Borneo, currently known as Sabah, was united with Malaya, Sarawak, and Singapore, to form Malaysia. On 12 September 1962, during President Diosdado Macapagal's administration, the Philippine government claimed the territory of North Borneo, and the full sovereignty, title, and dominion over it, were ceded by the heirs of the Sultan of Sulu, Muhammad Esmail E. Kiram I, to the Republic of the Philippines. By then, the Philippines continue this territorial claim over North Borneo, based on an agreement signed in 1878 between the Sultan of Sulu and the North Borneo Chartered Company. It maintains the position that the sovereignty of the Sultanate over the territory was not abolished, and that North Borneo was only leased to the North Borneo Chartered Company. However, Malaysia considers this dispute as a non-issue, as it interprets the 1878 agreement as a form of cession, and it deems that the residents of Sabah had exercised their right to self-determination when they joined to form the Malaysian Federation in 1963. 
The argument is rooted in the word Pajakan in the North Borneo 1878 treaty, on how it should be properly interpreted. The ambiguous term Pajakan, a Malay term that could be translated as, to lease, or to grant and see. In Salu and Malay, the word Pajakan essentially means that the land is pawned in perpetuity, for the annual session money, and the Sultanate would need to repay the entire infinite value of the territory to redeem it back, and the term Salama Lama, which means forever or in perpetuity, indicates a binding effect beyond the lifetime of the Sultan. Throughout the British administration of North Borneo, the British government continued to make the annual session money payment to the Sultan and his heirs, and these payments were expressly shown in the receipts as session money. In 1963, during the meeting of Mafi Lindo, a sub-regional association in Southeast Asia between Malaysia, the Philippines, and Indonesia, the heirs of the Sultanate of Sulu requested payment through the Philippines government to the federal state of Malaysia. The request has been granted by Kuala Lumpur, and the Malaysian government pays an amount considered as a session, while the Sultanate of Sulu considered the payment as a rental. The annual payment was halted after a private militant junta standoff. The annual payment was also the reason why the word Pajakan in the 1878 treaty was interpreted as leased, since the nature of the lease involved the periodic payment in terms or in perpetuity. To counter this claim, Malaysia halted its payment for the reason that no one has in control over Sabah, but it opposed the hundreds of years of annual payment from the British Empire, and from the new form Malaysian Federation from 1963 to 2013. So, who is the real owner of Sabah? Apparently, Sabah is technically part of the federal state of Malaysia currently, when North Borneo was incorporated into the Federation in 1963. But in the future, the thing seems uncertain. Currently, the arbitrary battle is between the heirs of the Sultan, a private Filipino citizen, and the Malaysian government. The Philippine government could step up, and represent the heirs of the Sultanate of Sulu as the successor of North Borneo. If ever, the 1878 treaty is still binding and enforceable, the non-payment of Malaysia of an annual rental since 2013 could result in a breach of contract, and as a consequence, the control, and ownership of North Borneo can be taken back by the owner or to the heirs of the Sultanate of Sulu. Now it underlies a question, how important is Sabah, not just in the Malaysian economy, but also in the foundation of the Malaysian Federation as a union state. When the proposal to form Malaysia was put forward by the Malayan chief minister, North Borneo responded with a general sense of misgiving and to a certain extent of mistrust. The people of the state were fearful that Sabah would be dominated by their more developed Malayan counterpart. The fear of being colonized by the Federation of Malaya, led Sabahan to be more aware and concerned about their political status and political future. Before joining Malaysia in 1963, measures were taken in form of meetings and surveys but no actual referendum was conducted. However, before committing themselves totally to the merger of Malaya, Sabahan had listed down its conditions to safeguard the certain interests of the states. These conditions are known as the 20 points. This includes no state religion in North Borneo and English should be the official language of North Borneo for all purposes. Sabah is considered as an important state in Malaysian Federation, it contributes $21.8 billion, or around 5.8% of the 2021 gross domestic product of the country. Sabah is Malaysia's second biggest state, both in terms of population and land area, with over 3.8 million Sabahan across states in an area of 73,904 square kilometers. It constitutes, of more than 11% of the Malaysian population and more than one-fifth of the land mass of the country. Its oil and gas industry is one of the biggest in the federation. Sabah has about 11 trillion cubic feet of gas, and 1.5 billion barrels of oil in its reserves, representing about 12% and 25% of Malaysia's gas and oil industry. With major oil and gas deposits offshore, Sabah has long been a key part of Malaysia's hydrocarbons industry, a major driver of the national economy where oil and gas have made up a considerable slice of Sabah's state revenues and the country's economy. 
Sabah is Malaysia's top crude oil producer, with about 42% of the oil produced in Sabah, while Peninsular Malaysia at 32% and the remaining 26% from Sarawak. While it produced 13% of the country's natural gas, with Sarawak is the biggest producer of gas at around 61%. However, in terms of revenue from sales of petroleum products, it's surprising that Sabah only shared less than 10% despite its producing 42% of crude oil and 13% of natural gas to Malaysia's oil and gas industry. Though negotiation is ongoing, to ensure Sabah's oil and gas rights are well protected and to have a fair distribution of revenue. Sabah and neighboring Sarawak state in Borneo Island, hold much of the nation's oil and gas reserves, and have long asked for more payments from Petronas, the sole manager of the country's energy reserves. In order to obtain more benefits over its own oil reserve, Sabah will now collect 5% of the state tax from the federal government oil company Petronas. In 2021, Sabah was expected to receive 1.2 billion ringgit or around $303 million, as Prime Minister had agreed for the state to collect state tax. This is also in compliance on the 20 point of condition where North Borneo should retain control of its own finance, development and tariff, and should have the right to work up its own taxation and to raise loans on its own credit. After the Sarawak government and state giant Petronas signed a key agreement that enables Sarawak, through its own oil company Petros, to play a greater role in its own oil and gas industry through cooperation with the national oil company itself. Saba is set to follow the lead of neighbor Sarawak in demanding greater involvement in its oil and gas operations and a larger share of the revenue from the state's production. But the real question is, was the incorporation of Sabah into the Malaysian Federation as legal and binding, based on the 1878 treaty between the Sultanate of Sulu and the British Empire? Or the 1878 concession treaty has a legal basis in the present day's international law system? Either way, both countries must respect any authorized arbitrary proceeding issued by the international court, and be able to create a diplomatic concession for a peaceful resolution of the issue.